where are we? We are actually in the midst of one of the world's mega biodiversities, which is the Malaysian tropical rainforest. As you can see, there are a number of different types of plants. And if we explore the undergrowth below here, I'm sure we'll come across a number of different types of animals. Now, if I plan to classify all these living things, where will I begin? Welcome all to BioWorld, where we are going to answer this question. For beginners, we shall have to divide all living things into five kingdoms. They are namely Prokaryote, Protoctista, Fungi, Plantae, and Animalia. But first, let's have a look at the SDPF Semester 3 syllabus. In Chapter 14, under the topic of biodiversity, we are required to describe the morphological characteristics. Morphological refers to the structural characteristics of specific phyla in four kingdoms. These include Protoctista, Fungi, Plantae, and Animalia. Note that Prokaryote is not in the semester 3 syllabus. However, if you would like to know more about Kingdom Prokaryote, you may visit my video on cell theory and prokaryotic cells. The link is provided in the description box below. Now, in this video, I'm going to cover Kingdom Protoctista, which will include Phyla, Chlorophyta, and Zoomastigina, and Kingdom Fungi, which only covers Phyla, Zygomycota. I'm sure you will be familiar with some of the members of Kingdom Protoctista. These include the Amoeba, Paramecium, the Chlamydomonas, and the Euglena, just to name a few. The names I mentioned are actually genus names, so they are scientific. This means when you write these names down, please remember to underline them. Now let's have a look at the characteristics of Kingdom Protoctista. Firstly, members of this kingdom must be unicellular. They have to be single cell organisms. Secondly, they must be eukaryotic, which means they will have nucleus as well as membranous organelles. Let's discuss a few of the membranous organelles. If you look at Chlamydomonas and Euglena, you will notice that they have been colored green to indicate that they are photosynthetic. To do photosynthesis, they will need the organelle chloroplast. The Chlamydomonas has a cup-like chloroplast, whereas the Euglena has circular-shaped chloroplast. They both have the red eye spot to help detect presence of sunlight and products of photosynthesis are stored in this organelle called the pyrenoid. Euglena can also convert the product of photosynthesis into a polysaccharide called paramyloid. They are stored as granules in the cytoplasm. The amoeba and paramecium are not colored green to indicate that they are not autotrophic. Instead, they are heterotrophic. The amoeba will ingest its food using its pseudopodium and carrying out phagocytosis. The food then is trapped in food vacuoles. Likewise, the paramecium also ingests its food by using its cilia to guide food through its gullet and the food is then stored in food vacuoles too. All these organisms are aquatic Therefore, they have to carry out osmoregulation, and to do that, they have contractile vacuoles. Some of the organisms in Kingdom Protoctista are mobile, meaning that they can move. They move with the aid of hair-like extensions called flagella, if it is long, 
and cilia if it is short. Both the flagella and the cilia, when cut, will show a 9 plus 2 microtubular arrangement. Note that the Chlamydomonas has two equal length flagella. However, the Euglena has one long flagella and one short flagella. The long flagella is used for movement, but the short flagella is actually used to guide food into its gullet. So Euglena is a bit special because not only is it autotrophic, but it is also heterotrophic. So this leads to classification at the phylum level. According to our syllabus, we need to know of two phyla, that is phylum chlorophyta, which is commonly called alga. These will include microorganisms that are autotrophic. A true chlorophyta is chlamydomonas, but euglena actually cannot fit into this phylum because euglena is not 100% autotrophic. The euglena actually has its own phyla called euglenophyta. The heterotrophic microorganisms can fall into the phylum called zoomastigena. Generally, we also classify them as protozoa. But members of phylum zoomastigena actually are parasitic microorganisms, like trichonympha or trichonosoma. Here, amoeba actually is categorized in a phylum called phylum protozoa, which is not in our syllabus. And paramecium is in a phylum called ciliophora, which is also not in our syllabus. Now, since phylum chlorophyta can be autotrophic, why are they not classified into kingdom plantae? Let's have a look. The reasons why alga cannot be classified under kingdom plantae, although they have chloroplasts, they do photosynthesis, and in fact, in the case of Chlamydomonas, it has a cell wall made of cellulose. The reasons are because, firstly, members of kingdom plantae have to be multicellular. Alga are unicellular. Besides that, Members of kingdom plantae are not mobile, they are static, they do not move, whereas algae, due to the presence of flagella, are mobile. So then, let's talk about the protozoas. And the protozoas enter kingdom animalia, considering that the protozoas are heterotrophic, just like kingdom animalia, and are mobile. Turns out, they cannot qualify into kingdom animalia since they are unicellular. Members of kingdom animalia have to be multicellular. Let's now move on to the next kingdom. Kingdom fungi. Kingdom fungi, we only study one phylum, phylum zygomycota, and the genus is genus Rhizopus. A common example of genus Rhizopus is the fungus that grows on expired bread, commonly called the bread mold. Let's look at the microscopic structure of genus Rhizopus. The grey patches on the expired bread are rhizopus. Upon further inspection, you can see it has a stem with a circular top, which we can represent in a diagram form. We can use this diagram to discuss the characteristics of kingdom fungi. Firstly, all cells that make up the rhizopus are eukaryotic, just like in kingdom protoctista. This means the cells have both nucleus and membranous organelles. The cells here 
have cell wall, but the cell wall in kingdom fungi is different from kingdom protoctista. The alga in kingdom protoctista have cell wall made of cellulose, whereas here the cell wall is made of a polymer called chitin. Chitin is a polymer that is a mix of carbohydrate and protein. The physical structure of kingdom fungi is that it has a stem-like structure called a sporangiophore, and this sporangiophore then circles into a sporangium, which will contain spores. It also has a root-like structure called hyphae, and when there is a network of hyphae, it is called a mycelium. Some of the hyphae will grow downwards. This we call as a rhizoid. And its function mainly is for anchorage, meaning that it is used to hold on to the surface of the bread. Now, when each rhizopus forms, they are connected between one another by a hyphae called the stolon. The nutrition of fungi is heterotrophic, but it is different from that of the protozoa in Kingdom Protoctista. In Kingdom Protoctista, heterotrophic nutrition involves ingestion of food. But here, the fungi does not eat its food. Instead, it carries out saprophytism. Saprophytic nutrition is when the hyphae will secrete extracellular enzymes into the bread to digest the starch of the bread and form monosaccharides. The monosaccharide then is absorbed through the hyphae into the structure of the fungi. The fungi then stores the monosaccharide in the form of glycogen. In reproduction, fungi can carry out both sexual and asexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction is carried out when the sporangium ruptures to release spores which will be carried by wind to other surface of bread. In the case of sexual reproduction, the hyphae of the fungi will then conjugate and exchange genetic material to form a zygospore. And be classified under kingdom plantae. Considering that the fungi is multicellular, immobile, and has cell wall. Turns out it cannot qualify into kingdom plantae because it is heterotrophic, not autotrophic, and its cell wall is made of chitin, not cellulose. So in that case, and enter kingdom animalia. Considering that it is multicellular, it is heterotrophic, and it stores carbohydrates in the form as glycogen, just like animals. Turns out no also, because although it is heterotrophic, it uses saprophytic nutrition, not holozoic nutrition. Holozoic nutrition is when we ingest or eat food. Besides that, the cells of kingdom fungi have a cell wall. Kingdom animalia, the cells do not have a cell wall. And of course, the fact that fungi is immobile. We have managed to describe the morphological characteristics of kingdom Protoctista, Kingdom Fungi, and in my next video, I'll talk to you about Kingdom Plantae. Until then, goodbye.